Hi everyone, it's Ann Huffman. I'm going to uh, attempt to show you how to edit personal photographs when you trace them. One reason that I don't, don't teach this is because um, there are so many shadows and tones uh, when it comes to photographs and uh, when you want to create them into an SVG, uh, there's very little left over after you finish modifying them. So I don't get into it. Um, this will probably be the one and only tutorial that I do on photographs, but this is just to help those of you that have patience, because uh, that's what it takes uh, to uh, modify your personal uh, photographs. And so in the description, you see I've already listed some uh, resources that you can use if you the iPhone has a really good program and there's a YouTube uh, tutorial on it go to YouTube type in uh, the one for the iPhone type in the ones for the Android I'm sure they probably have YouTube uh, tutorials for it to show you in more detail this tutorial is not about um, those resources I'm not trying to show you how to work that. You need to figure that out on your own. Uh, but it, it was easy enough for me to do, so if I can do it, anybody uh, can do it. But I want to show you about this main one here, which is Pick SVG, because once it finished um, uh, converting it from um, a JPEG uh, or a GIF or a PNG, it converts it to an SVG. But it doesn't convert it to an SVG where you can layer it or change the colors on something. It's just black and white, one flat image, you know, pretty much what you see is what you get unless you know how to go in and edit it and clean it up. Uh, and that's what I'm going to show you in uh, this tutorial. So I, I'm at Pinterest now and just trying to find some um, images that we're going to go back to um, um, pick SVG or picture to SVG uh, and actually uh, have it trace it. This is one that we're going to do, but what I want to show you is um, some of the pro problems that we run into. I can get one of find one and the reason that I ended up with her let's take this one here for example if we wanted to trace her there's a shadow there's a different color under her neck than her face there's different shadows uh, around her chest and pick SVG and pretty much the other ones are all going to try to pick up on that because it's, it's pretty much looking for different shades of gray or when it changes so you and around her mouth. So if we just trace this, it's going to be a black glob there and under there. That's why I listed the other ones for you to uh, use on your uh, cell phones um, and then send it, email it to yourself. Um, and I think they pretty much come as a J, JPG. And then you will bring that into Silhouette Studios and begin to edit it or clean it up. There's a lot of shadows that you can see from her braids there. So that's what you need to look at on your personal photographs that uh, you, you're trying to trace yourself without any luck or you're asking others to trace for you when their results would be pretty much what your results would be because you didn't give them a high enough resolution image. Now, what, um, what I've said uh, a, a couple of months back, and some of you were not with the group a couple of months back, and that is you can't do everything in Silhouette Studios. Sometimes you just got to prep your stuff in a different software. You need to uh, uh, open up your picture in Photoshop and Paint and Paint Shop Pro and something to first try to get rid of the backgrounds on it. You can't, don't expect to get great results by just uploading your picture in silhouette and thinking silhouettes gonna do all the work for you it won't so 
keep that in mind. I've heard some people say Pick Monkey is another one that'll work. So like with her Shadows and Tones, um, I would upload it to another um, software photo editor and see if I could lighten it or sharpen it to get rid of some of these shadows under here so they're not black and I lose uh, the detail of her chin. That's why, again, I don't, I don't teach uh, about tracing personal photographs. So it's a hit and miss unless you do some other work. And of course, you know we all don't want to do any extra work. We just want to find something and bam, that's supposed to work and, and that's it. Also, you're not going to get all of the details of uh, the hair. You'll get where it kind of starts and stops at uh, because, again, the different shadows and shades of her complexion is going to throw off what it's going to be able to do. So I just want to make sure that you understand that part of it and, and you're more realistic uh, with what it's going to be able to produce for you. But let's see if maybe this one is a bigger... Uh, picture and it is but it has this stuff here uh on the back background so and you can tell again that shadow under her neck but i'm going to do um i don't know if she has anything that she is not maybe with her we see some shadow going on here so just remember that so i'm going to save it to my hard drive which is what I have to do. It's going to my desktop, and I'm just going to call it hair. And I already have something that's called that. So I'm just going to save on top of it. Of course, you'll name yours, you know, whatever the, the name of your family member is, but I'm calling it hair. So I'm going to come over to um, pick SVG. It's free. That's where you go uh, to get it. And it's really, really simple. Uh, these are the file types that it will do. It won't do images or files over one me megabyte, and some of these personal photographs are going to be bigger. So you um, probably need to research and find you some software uh, that will resize the picture without distorting it to get those uh, photographs that are generally about three to four, even six megabytes big to shrink it down so that you can do this. So, um, and it pretty much shows you, this is where it comes from, this is what you end up with over here. So we're gonna go to upload, and I think I called it hair, yes. So now it's going to start the processing um, um, part of it, and or upload. So it uploaded, and I can't zoom in anymore. Well, let's see. I hope I can still get those controls there. Yes, I just have to go back. To it. So this would be her picture here. Um. This would not necessarily be one that I would want to work with, but just to show you that when you come to filters, you have several to pick from. And I will look at what three looks like, and it just redoes it uh, to see kind of what you're missing. Two, work my way down. Two gives a little bit more detail. You see see her chin start to come in. So invert number two, um, we lost a little bit there. So, so far, invert number two works. So let's see what four does. Four really gives some details. So I'm going to say download this image, and it names it, I think, what it wants. Yes. So I'm just going to change this name to back to hair. because I would never remember the name that it gave it, and it's automatically saving it as an SVG. And now I'm going to go over to um, Silhouette Studios, and I'm going to open up Hair.
SVG. And it's a good size, so that's why it's you know beginning to feed off of some of my uh, memory uh, now. There we go. So that's it. So this is an SVG file that we open up. Of course, I have business edition, but what I'm going to show you, you don't need business edition. I'm trying to make it over here. And so with the SVG, now what you want to do is uh, I just make mine bigger so I can see it. I'm going to right click and I'm going to ungroup because all these little pieces is there. So I'm going to click off of it and I just want to start clicking on these little spots and hitting the delete key just in cleaning things up. And yes, you can uh, uh, do more than uh, one of these at a time, but that's just what I. I'm trying to get in here now to clean it up. Um, I don't have any lines that are necessarily broken. Um, it's something to try to uh, maybe to have given her lips some color down there if that's what I wanted to do. If that's the case, um, let me just zoom in. I wanted to close off her lips so that I could give it some color. Of course, you know now how to go in on because all I'm doing is just clicking on these pieces. And this is just what you call cleaning it up. That's all that this is. And with this particular filter, uh, it, it brought in her chin, which is good, but you can see it also brought that shadow in. Now you can zoom in really close and use the eraser and try to erase some of that if that's what you want. <clears throat> Another thing is look at what they're wearing uh, as well because a lot of that distracts the other thing. But for her, her lips, I would come to the line tool. I'm going to draw a line from, I'm going to go over a little bit to a thicker part uh, of her lip and draw my line down to here, double click to release it. Um, it gave me this point editing, but what I really can click off of it because I don't want point. I want to be able to thicken my line. So I'm going to go over to my line panel. I'll color it black and go back to there's a delay for this for some reason to thickness, and I'm just going to increase it until it looks like it's somewhat part of, um, and I'm using my arrow key to move it up a little bit, that it's part of her lip. Now, you cannot click here and then click on the other parts of this and weld, because it's not going to do anything. So this is where, come on, don't drag, oh wow. This must be a really big image that it's taking, that it's bouncing me back and forth with this. Wow, it's doing that. Let me close out another window. So I post everything that, that I can. So it's like, hey, okay, you all fight over the memory now. When this finish, what I'm going to do is um, make a copy of it so that I can 
um, um, retrace it with the um, the thicker line line over her lips because for some with SVG file, I guess if you brought it in as a JPEG and you did it yourself, that welding works. I just have not found where uh, welding works when I'm adding a line. Oh goodness, come on, cannot be that bad. Um, so, and I have a video in the group that shows how to thicken lines, and you'll see where um, I would add all of, uh, manually add lines to close in gaps, and then I would make a copy of her and retrace her again. Now the thicker line is there, and I, I no longer have any gaps. And so if this thing ever decides to go back to my image, life would be good. And all I did was draw one little line. So we um, um, picked invert number four to get to here. If you try some of the others, you'll see what other effects you get if that's more the look uh, that you want. But you see you're still dealing with a lot of shadow because there is a lot of shadow. Ready to. Looks about the same to me. And ready three. And looks like you lost some detail here. And if this is the one that you would want, you would do what you what I'm waiting for it to end. You would um, use your line tool and draw the line and then keep trying to close in her chin uh, with it. And once you have enough lines around it, then you would just select the whole image. Um, and use your snipping tool because you've got to bring it back in as, let me see how this thing, ah, it's back. Okay, great. So, and see that, that welding took away my uh, line that I had. So we know welding doesn't work. So I have my line back now. So this is what you would do. If you wanted to tighten up anything else there, uh, whatever you wanted to do uh, with it. Okay. If you wanted to, you know, cut parts of it out uh, for complexion or eyes or something like that. But generally, these are just one color uh, uh, that you use. So now that I have this for her lips that's there. Uh, I'm going to use my, my snipping tool and draw over her because I need to make a copy of this in order to now I'll retrace it, and you see the lip part is closed. I don't want to get too big. Isn't it's eating up the space? That now my line is there that you see that I drew uh, uh, for her bottom lip. So this needs to be traced. So this is a second trace now in order to get it right. That's why it's good to go ahead and make, make whatever little changes that you want, clean whatever up that you want. To to um, uh, do uh, uh, whatever it is that you want to fix on her. Then make a copy of her, and this is what we're going to trace. But I'm going to group this, because remember, I ungrouped it to get all those little spots out there. And I'm going to reduce the size so that maybe it won't hog up all of my memory. And something didn't group. <laughs> I don't know. I lost some of her shirt now here, as you can see. So I thought I selected everything uh, for group, but I didn't. But anyway, she's much smaller now, so hopefully things will move better. So for this, now you want to trace.
right again. Okay, take off. Go back. Here we go again. Okay, now there we go. So now I'm tracing her. And I'm really just looking at the area that I closed in to make sure that they are enough yellow because I know the rest of it is going to do fine. So this was at 45. So I'm just going to press my luck and try to get to 50 if this thing catches up with me. Just to make sure that this is yellow in here, um, um, which means that my gap is going to be closed. So that's fine. I say trace. No, I click trace. There we go. So now, there she is. And this is the look that the software and the blade sees. This, on the other hand, is the look that I'll, I guess I need to select it, that we see. And let me do the lines so that they are black as well. There you go. So see, now that's closed in. So that's what you would do on the other picture if this was one that you like this look. Uh, you would have to keep drawing lines and you're not going to get one long line in there. You're going to do several of those lines until you get the formation of uh, her jawline there, and then you'll do exactly what I did here, which is a snipping tool, make a, a copy of it. It's like, for now, if I see something else, and I'll click here and delete it, if I saw something else that um, I should have covered or, or, or whatever that, that I need to use the line tool for, um, I'm still going to have to get my snipping tool and make a copy of it and retrace it because welding is not going to work. As you just saw, it, it, it didn't work. So um, now I can say, okay, well, I closed her lips some. I like that. So now I'm going to, to um, release the compound path. Hopefully it all didn't turn black, which I have a suspicion it will. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, let's see. Oh, that's the line. Okay. Ah, because I made the line. No color. So I'm going to click back here. This little piece here, I'm going to hit delete. I didn't want it. Some of these other little pieces, I'll just get it. And again, this is like the raw view. This is what your machine sees. This is what your machine is coming from. Now, the the if you really uh, have patience with this, you can smooth some things out on her as well. Like um, I thought my line was there, and it really wasn't. Like I can't and get to the nodes. This is a poor connection. Uh, it, it should be giving me the um, my nodes now as I double click on it. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on uh, nodes over here so that I can see it. Um, and then and it hasn't popped up. My A delay uh, because what I'm going to do is select. Well, I'll just use it up here. Simplify, meaning give me less of all of these nodes. And just like I showed you in the other uh, tutorial, nodes is something that seems intimidating, but it's just more time consuming to get to know it. Because I can grab one of these these handles and I probably should do it with this slow connection that we have. Um, to kind of smooth out her lip. I'm clicking off of it so I can kind of see what I'm working with. My goal is to 
bring this out, get rid of this little part over here uh, uh, on her on her face. And you can do this um, in the normal view instead of this outline view. Uh, you just have to make sure that zoom them back out here. Let me uh, let me get rid of this stuff here at the top, and I'll show you what I was about to say. Is that if, if this view makes you nervous in uh, as far as removing something or editing something, you can do it in the normal view where it's going to look like once um, it cuts. There we go. So now I'll make a black. And of course, her face is black. So that's now what I would be doing is clicking on pieces. Let's see if I can get, get something a little lighter in here that you can see. See all these lines that's there. These are these are all opportunities to color things in. But we're not trying to color them all in. So I would just right click on her and make her a compound path. So now when I go to black, it's back to the view that, that um the view that we want. <clears throat> so from here with the compound path, you can do the same thing. I'm hoping that when I double click around her lips, that, that the node uh panel pop up and it has, has not. So it's making me do it manually. Um and I a panel should pop up over here. And I'm thinking that it's, it's because of whatever's going on that it is on your computer. You're probably going to have, oh, I see it forming now. The notes panel. And just look at all those little cuts that your blade is going to have to make in order to get this this out. So to save, I guess, the length of time that it would take to um, cut this with all of these nodes, you can keep clicking sim simplify and it reduces the nodes, but it also distorts some things as well because it doesn't know that this is a photograph and that by, by clicking on simplify, yeah, it's really begging for memory here that by clicking on it, all of a sudden the eye is no longer in, in that oval shape because you keep reducing every time you click simplify you reduce the number of nodes Okay, wow. Well, I think this is the panel. No, that was Phil. Uh, when I click on nodes, I, I should be getting a panel to show up over here for my nodes that end, and it's not. So I don't know what's going on with mine. So I'm going to leave it before it decides to crash on me. Um, but that's when you want to just spend more time learning more about how these nodes work uh, to simplify it. But the main thing was I wanted to show you how PIC SVG uh, works um, online. This super mode thing, this is a joke. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't uh, down there. But uh, again, you can't, can't do everything inside of Silhouette Studios. You ha have to clean things up sometimes before you bring it in. You need to get rid of some background sometimes before you uh, bring it in. You need to sharpen it, uh, uh, um, especially with personal uh, photographs. Uh, so you you may need to invest in, you know, in, in another third party software. I use PaintShop Pro, cost about $69 for it for a lifetime. 
uh, and I, I'm able to go in and uh, sharpen complexions, whether it's shadows or tones, to kind of minimize them, save my picture, and then bring it into the software. So get out of that, the mindset that you know you can just do everything in silhouette. No, nope, you gotta prep it sometimes before you do it. Now let's come back to normal over here. Woo, thank goodness I am. Because I wanted to show you, now I just showed you pick SVG, and I showed you that you would click on the image, um, and you're either going to ungroup or you're going to release compound path, and you just want to get rid of little pieces all around the neck to clean things up is what you want to do. If you don't like that much shadow around the nose, get the eraser or the knife tool since it's an open area in the face. I probably would zoom in really, really close and just use a knife because the knife tool takes less memory than the eraser. That eraser will begin to make you crash, especially if you have other programs on. So that's pick SVG. Here's another one that I said um, uh, for Android phones, deep, um, deep art uh, effect. And this one here, because I have an Android, well, I have an iPhone for, for the city, but I use my Android. I selected Daily. And this was me with the little uh, young man that did a positive rap video. But the whole thing in a nutshell is uh, this is a JPEG. It is not SVG like pick SVG online. So I would have to probably crop, crop this out, crop some of the mayor out so I just get he and I in there and then I'm going to trace. And it's going to pick up the different shades there so you would be able to to make this in color if you want it to. Uh, once it traces, it's going to trace all these little dots that are in there. I didn't really play around with um, the program on the phone. I probably could have eliminated some. But for me, if I was going to do this, once I trace it, I knew it would pick up all these dots. When I ungroup or release compound path, I would just zoom in and start deleting them out. And then I would end up with a clear face and his hair clear and all of that. That is the daily effect for color. This is the same software uh, and it is in sketch mode. So this would be a whole lot easier for me to trace because I have lines now. It'll do a horrible job on this over here, but I've got some lines. The other program I mentioned was Sketch um, Sketch Photo, I think is what it was. And this is like as if someone made a pencil drawing of it. This would trace really good. It's going to pick up on all the designs that was in my dress. You see a black line going all the way around my face. It's going to pick up all of these darker lines that's in in there. And that's just something I just quickly picked up on. Um, I, there were like a couple hundred of these different photo editors uh, in my Android phone. So you pick one that's going to give you good lines if you want to convert it to an SVG to, to cut. If I was just doing print and cut, this would be fine for me. But if I'm trying to layer something, because that's the only time SVG really matters, is if you're trying to layer something, then you need dark lines uh, around it. And so what I would have done if this was a picture I just had to have, and around my hair there's not enough dark lines that's in it, I would basically make this um, um, more transparent, and I would just grab my line tool and just start drawing me some lines around it. And when I got enough lines in there uh, that I've thickened and I've colored black, then I'll take my snipping tool and make a copy of it and retrace it. So that's something that the, these personal photographs are so near and dear and they're special, but you, 
they're, you're not going to pop them in a microwave and it works. You have to bake this one in, in an oven, uh, meaning you have to spend some time with it. It might take three traces in order to get all of the areas like around his arm. It would not trace it uh, because there's not that black line deep enough line going around it. So you're going to need to draw that line if that part of the picture is important to you. Or go back to your cell phone and try one of the other 300 uh, photo editors in there until you get something that you like that um, you can work, uh, that you're able to work with. Because they had tons and tons and tons of filters that's in there. So I've shown you all of those. The only one left to show you, uh, and it's going to be on YouTube since um, I didn't feel like plugging in the city's uh, cell phone in order to, to get it. So uh, not to worry. Let me just click here and I'll click on my YouTube sh shortcut. And uh, I'm just super slow. So I'm going to type in I'm a engine. I M A E N G I N E. And, and see if it caught up with me. Yes, it did. Now I'll say search. And there's a lady K Hall uh, that is doing this YouTube tutorial on, on that, and it works really well. And but it's only for iPhones, and um, it has lots. This one here. Um, well, there's several of them, but I thought she did a good job in explaining. Uh, about the IMA engine because once you finish playing around with it, you can uh, save it as an SVG file. Whereas Android, Android phone would not let you. I, the sound is, is horrible. So you're just going to have to go to uh, Google, I mean, um, YouTube and search for um, Emma in. Uh, yourself and watch it and she shows you the filters she shows you how to adjust it there are other ones here that show you how to do it you can even do it on your iPad you know so there's lots of other tutorials on it but I like hers because she really goes into a lot of detail explaining those filters and it's free but if you want to save it as a SVG file then it's like a dollar ninety nine um to do that. So I'm going to in this one because I'm going to do another um tutorial on being able to uh write words in your name in rhinestone. So let me click back over here and end this one.